Hi, this is Jay from Encodian. In this uh, video, we're going to have a look at the different options in Power Automate to take data. Uh, in this example, we're taking a SharePoint list item uh, and add that data to a Word document to generate a new document. Um, I guess the starting point is the Microsoft um, connector, so the Word Online Business Connector and the action populate a Microsoft Word template, which we've got outlined here. It's a pretty straightforward action um, to set up. You can see here we've got when a new item is being modified. So in our example, we've got a SharePoint list with some data in it. And you'll notice I've got um, a number of columns on the item. Let's just go in and edit. Let's have a look at it. So we've got uh, title, description. Notice we've got some rich text data in here. So for description and for notes. Um, and basically, if this will fire, there's a trigger, uh, a trigger condition Sorry, on the flow that says only fire when uh, status equals archived. And then we've got some attachments. And what's basically going to happen in this example, um, we're going to pull the first attachment, there's a reason for that, uh, plus the data, and we're going to populate this data into the word template. So let's have a look at that template, template.doc. And there's a few limitations that we're going to sort of uncover as, as we run through this. So you can see here, in, in this example for this particular action, what you have to do is you have to use content controls. So we can use the developer tab and there's, let's get into design mode, you've got these different controls that you can use to, to pop in. And you'll, for, for most of these, I've basically used the just the simple text control because unfortunately the rich text control uh, is not supported. Um, which means we can't get uh, HTML and rich text data in, but we'll, we'll see that as we go through again. And down here, we've got uh, an image column, uh, an image control. It's worth bearing in mind, one of, the, one of the slight problems we'll see is that because of the way the action works, when you, when you create these uh, different controls in your template, they will appear inside the flow. So we can see created archive, by archive, so on and so forth. Those are the controls inside the template which you're pointing at. Now, if you, um, like I'll show later on in this example, if you have an N number of images, for example, uh, so you, you could have one image or seven images or 12 images, and you're not quite sure how many you're gonna have at, at, at runtime, then this is a real tricky situation because um, this has got a one-to-one -one mapping between the controls and the template. So in, in essence, if you could have 12 images, you'd have to pre-create 12 fields, and obviously of which 11 could be blank. So it's not a great way to sort of set up that document. So anyway, let's let's run through this in the first example. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna trigger this um, this flow just to show, just to run through it. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna test it manually, but on the list item itself, what I'll do is I will, I've got some, let's just delete the ones that are already there from my testing earlier on. And I'm gonna add an attachment, but I'm gonna add a small image. So let's just view this in detail so you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna add this 68K image to, uh, let's just bring that across. I'm just conscious that it might not be totally visible. Click open and click add. Okay, so that attachment is gonna get added to that list item, which in effect is gonna trigger the flow. So that should, should fire up and run through. However, as ever, sometimes it will complete, but it might not always load in Power Automate. So we'll just jump back and we'll go in this way to the run history and we'll see hopefully that that'll load up and show us that it's run successfully. Right, brilliant. So we should now have a file uh, in the library where we put create file. Um, I can't, it's not easy. I'll just show you where I put it. <laughs> uh, so I'll jump over to here and, sorry, wrong tab. And we can see that my one.docx has been created. So I'll go to preview. And where we go. And there is our data. So you can see a few of the issues we've got. First one being that we can't handle the, the rich text data, doesn't isn't handled at all well, or albeit the data's in the document. And I guess another problem is we can see that image has been skewed because it's not been uh, resized, it's just been put in a straight, it's totally aligned to the to the control that I'd put in again, another limitation. So Let's, um, this is a quite a low fidelity image, a small image. Let's try it with a, a larger image. We'll do exactly the same thing again. And I'll go test manually. What I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna rip off that large attachment. I'm gonna put a bigger one on. So let's just get rid of this one. Delete and add attachment and we'll just put a bigger file on. And we'll click save. 
So exactly the same process, there's no difference in the structure of the flow. The only difference is, of course, that I'm trying to add a larger image into that flow. So let's jump over and we'll see, and we can see straight away it's failed pretty quickly. The error message is super simple. It's a 400, which says it basically means it's a bad request. Um, and the bad request is very simple. The payload of data that we're sending has exceeded 10 megabytes. So another limitation of the, of the Microsoft Word Tape Action is that if you've got data bigger than 10 meg, then that's not gonna work. And we know a lot of our customers who are creating documents, perhaps they've got power apps that are collecting lots of images for a particular reason, or they've got documents that they need to insert inside other documents. Actually, you can get past that 10 megabyte limit quite quickly. So a good way, I guess, work around. A good way or a good alternative to this action is to use the encoding action. So we provide an action called uh, populate word document and it works pretty much in the same way. What I would say it's a, perhaps a slightly more complex action to set up because the way that we, we work as opposed to having hard coded um, properties being read out the template. What we're actually doing is uh, this loads up and I can remind you how the, uh, the word actions configured. It's not going to load for me, is it? Let's go back in, click edit. Okay, well hopefully you remember earlier on, I can't get that, there we go, it's loaded up. So rather than having this configuration where it's reading the fields in the template, um, which in effect is hard coding, what we do is we, we pass JSON data. So uh, in this particular flow, what we've got is we've set up the JSON data. So we've got created, created by archive, archive by employee. Now you'll notice the description and notes, I've got these expressions and I'll just quickly explain what's happen here, happening here. Rather than passing just the, um, the employee display, uh, the display name or the notes value from the list item, we've put it, wrapped it in an expression. And what the expression's doing, um, it's looking for, yes, very good, don't make content, sorry. Let me just jump back from there. Power Automate's not, uh, there we go. So we've got this, if I, it's, there's the notes value that's coming, but it's it's wrapped this replace expression, expression and the important bit is this bit at the end, if I can just get my screen to go to the side. What it's doing, it's looking for speech marks in the notes value and replacing it uh, with the speech marks with a backslash. In effect, what that's doing is escaping the HTML so that the HTML can be put inside the JSON. If I didn't do that, then you'd get a 400 parsing error saying that the, the JSON data is invalid. Now, there is also, um, and I'll put it in the notes on the video actually, we've got uh, a, a, a post which talks about this in detail, about how to ex um, escape JSON in Power Automate. And it's not specific to our action, it applies to um, all of the actions where you might use JSON data uh, with a Power Automate. Cool, okay, so that's just an important point to note. Uh, we've also got uh, an expression, Base64, which is basically just taking the attachments and making sure that we're only passing the Base64 uh, value of the image into the data. Now, you simply pass the, the, the data to document data uh, and pass the, the template file, which we retrieve from get file content, and then that will run through. But let me just show you the difference in the template. So let me find simple. You'll see here, rather than having predefined controls, we just have these tokens. So created, created by, and basically what the action does, it looks for these tokens in the JSON. So created would map to the value that's coming in here and created, so on and so forth. Uh, let's just bring that back up. And you'll notice on description and the notes um, tokens, we've also got this hyphen HTML, which basically tells um, tells the engine to look at that data and insert it as, as HTML, in, in essence, keeping that rich text. We've also got a flag on the image that's being inserted that says keep ratio should, rather than squashing or resizing the image, that should, that should resize it. So let's, um, Right, let's test that, and so we'll jump in, we'll go to manual, and what we'll need to do is that just uh, gets ready for to be triggered. If we jump over to the, the item, click edit, we'll just pop a little bit more data on that. And we'll save that, and that should trigger the flow for us. So we're processing a large set of data here, so it's going to take a little bit more of time to, to run through. And in much the same way as before, what's going to happen is that the, the tokens inside the document will be searched for that map to the, um, 
to the JSON properties that we've passed in and the data contained in that will just essentially be written over the top of those tokens. So this will take a little bit longer to process because obviously we're putting some fairly large files into the Word document. So that's run through, which is great. And now we'll get that document added into uh, Power Automate. So let's just jump over here, sorry, into SharePoint. So I'll just refresh that. And there's our simple document that we've created this time. And I'll just jump into preview. Hopefully that'll be okay. Uh, again, the document contains a pretty large image that so might take a little bit of time. So, okay, that's rendered correctly. So now we can see we've, we've correctly got the HTML uh, rich text data from the, from the list items in the document as it should be. And you can see that the image that's been put to the document has also been put in correctly, which is great. So let's consider a, a slightly different scenario and I, that I mentioned very early on was what happens if you've got an N number of images? Well, we cater that for that really easily in our action. So what I'll do is I'll just jump over here and we'll go back to some flows. We'll turn this one off. Uh, sorry, turn that one on. And we'll turn this one off and we'll go in here and this should be our advanced scenario. So this time what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable called attachments and then we're going to go and get each attachment on the list item and we're going to append into that attachment some JSON to say here's the content of that attachment and then rather than previously where we were just passing in a single, a single uh, attachment we're going to pass in the array of attachments which we've built up here. Um, <clears throat> so if you follow in this, it's obviously a little bit more complicated. Again, in the blog post that's attached to this and in the video notes, we'll, we'll link to some, some examples that show exactly how to do this step by step. But just to run through the, again, just what's happening here, we're getting the attachments on the list item. We're getting each attachment's file, so the, the file content for each attachment, and then we're going to append it to an array variable so that we can access that later, later on. Again, we've got the replace on for the HTML action. So um, not too much different. I guess the only thing quickly to take a look at is just what's inside the template. So I'll bring that across. And this time what we've got is we've got for each statement saying for each attachment and attachments uh, in the image token, write in attachment.content, which is just, ma again, mapping the JSON structure. And that will put that, that image in. Uh, and we could have one or 100 images. And essentially, it will just cycle through each one and write them into the document. So, OK, so let's test this uh, advanced scenario. We'll go in, we'll test manual again. And we're going to add the attachments to the list item. Let's go in, click Edit. And we're going to add some larger attachments on. So we've got more than one attachment this time. Click save, click save. Now obviously we're processing more data so it's gonna take a little bit longer in terms of retrieving those files from, from SharePoint, added them into the array variable, passing them through to the encoding action to be, to be processed. Um, and then the document coming back is obviously gonna be larger because it contains larger images. Um, but let's just, whilst we're waiting for this to run through, let's just have a quick look again at the differences. So the last scenario is we've got a single image control inside it, we've got image uh, the evidence flag and keep ratio, whereas this template is going to run differently because we've got a different configuration, which has got a for each statement around that image control. So we've got um, again the same um, the same configuration for the image control. If you would, we've got the keep ratio, which says you know keep the ratio of the image, don't resize it, don't stretch it. But it's inside a for each loop, which says for each attachment, attachments take attachment dot content and insert that into this image control. So let's just have a quick check and see where we are. That, that, image, that flow is now executed successfully. Again, it's not rendered in Power Automate, but we'll just quickly go in here and click there. And we can see that that, that document's bit, sorry, that flow run is executed successfully. And we can jump into the library and we can see that we've got our file. I'll just refresh as it might come through. There we go. So we've got 25 meg file, which is what we'd expect because it's got more data in it. And I'll just go into preview and hopefully we can it'll render both images for me. So there's the first one and there's the second one. So obviously they're much larger images, high fidelity, large files, and that's, that's uh, uh, hence why the file size is, is quite great. So hopefully we've shown you um, sort of an alternative to the out of the box um, premium connector, I should say, Word Online connector. Um, we saw some of the limitations, the ability to process rich data, HTML, the inability to, to process large payloads, large images, uh, and the inability to process um, uh, repeating data or repeating image controls. Um, there are ways of doing repeating tables and stuff, but it's quite complicated, again, with quite a lot of limitations, whereas with the encoding action, we cover all of those scenarios and more. 
Uh, <clears throat> there's lots of examples on our blog posts. Uh, we'd recommend that you, you check those out. Those are with the accompanying blog post and they're also with the all the link to within this YouTube video. Again, if you've got any um, questions um, or support queries, then please visit support.encoding.com or you can ping the team at support.encoding.com.